Football heads, what's up? What's up? I am Jerry Azuma along with Sam Brief. Thank you for joining us for To The Points podcast. You will quickly hear a breakdown of primetime NFL matchups along with some bets that I like. So, man, I tell you what, the Lions and Chiefs, Sam, that was a good one last night. What do you think? I think Kadarius Tony just dropped another pass. I think that <laughs> Travis Kelsey was needed in this game. Yes. Zoom, we got to hear your thoughts. Along with Chris Jones, I mean, there was just a gaping hole, you know, in the middle of that defense for the Chiefs. No Chris Jones. There was a lot of problems all over the place. Nagy obviously was calling the place too. So it just didn't seem like they were really in sync. And the Lions, I mean, tremendous job by Dan Campbell, the head coach. He really got his team, you know, fired up to play this football game against the defending uh, Super Bowl champions. The Lions are, are, are real. They're the truth right now. And uh, they showed it on national TV. So you got to give them a lot of respect right now. But not too I, much respect because we're all we're Bear fans. No, no, no. We'll give them like a smidge of respect. But for me, the story of this game was the Chiefs offense falling short. Not like, hey, the Lions are instantly Super Bowl contenders. You mentioned Matt Nagy, which is sort of a bridge into what we're looking forward to next. I think I had a lot of the thoughts that Bears fans had watching some of the play calling in that game. It got a little sketchy uh, with did. Matt Nagy. So speaking of Bears, I, I'm, I don't want to talk too much about the Lions being good. I want to talk about what the Bears <laughs> are going to do against the Packers. And I know one of your really cool friends is joining us to do this. Peanut Tillman, he's going to be joining us as well. So we got some good stuff in store. But the Bears... You know what? There's a lot of um, uh, swirling information going around about the Bears being, you know, a possible contender. But we just don't know. There's a lot of question marks all over the place with this football team. Offensively, uh, they have Justin Fields and they should be good with him. They got DJ Moore. So we have some weapons that are in place. The offensive line is still a little shaky to my liking, but we'll see how that goes. And then defensively, I mean, it, this team is just really rebuilt, especially at the linebacker position. So uh, if the big dogs up front can go and eat, then that means the secondary should be pretty, pretty good as well. So we have a lot of... Uh, <laughs> A lot of big shoes to fill, um, but at the same time, we're really looking forward to uh, the Bears just coming out and showcasing what they have, showing that they're they're a contender, um, and getting into some type of a rhythm, you know, as a complete football team. Zoom, you picked the Bears. Jared Payton picked the Bears. I yeah. am picking the Bears. Now let's hear what this week's guest, Peanut Tillman, the legend himself, is picking. Let the Jordan Love era begin. They have a two-headed monster in Green Bay at the running back position. A.J. Dillon, Aaron Jones, yet a nice. Jordan Love, I know he's not a rookie, but this is also kind of like his rookie year. Doesn't have a lot of playing time, where in Chicago we have, a, we have an established quarterback in Justin Fields. I love that they got Darnell Wright. With the 10th pick overall this year's draft, beef up that offensive line. And we got some weapons. We got DJ Moore. I think he's going to be the game changer for the Bears this year, especially game one. We saw what he did in the offseason, or excuse me, in the preseason. So, yeah, I'm thinking Bears over the Packers, 21-14. That's my predicament. Go Bears. Peanut Tillman, the best. Looks like we're all unanimous. Bear the Hell down. Okay, Sunday Night Football, Zoom, ready for some primetime matchups. I yes. am just salivating for your thoughts. Let's go Sunday Night Football, Cowboys at Giants. Hit me. Cowboys at Giants. Oh, my goodness. The NFC East showdown. Everything for Dallas starts and stops with Dak Prescott, as we know. And uh, the Dallas Cowboys, they have a, a brand new offensive coordinator, Brian Schottenheimer. You know, it's going to be up to him to really um, put all the pieces together. You know, offensively, they're not short of talent at the wide receiver spot. CeeDee Lamb, he should see a lot of touches this game. Michael Gallup and Cooks, they're also very solid options. Um, the Giants secondary, though, they're really, really good. You know, they really... Um, they really can get after the quarterback. Their pass rush can cause a lot of problems. They have a guy by the name of Thibodeau, and he is very disruptive. They have a, a rookie linebacker um, by Bobby. His name is Bobby Okoye. 
and he is very active. He's a tackling machine. They also have Dexter Lawrence in the middle. He's no joke. He's a big plug player. Um, no Zeke this game, so it's going to be Pollard. He's going to get a lot of the touches, a lot of the action. He is a really good running back. Um, and also... Saquon Barkley for the Giants. I mean, I feel like he is going to get several touches. He's healthy finally. He he settled his contract. So hopefully he put all that stuff behind him and he can just get, get spinning out there. Daniel Jones, he's very athletic. He's tall. He's a big body. He has a strong arm. Uh, I want to say he's like 6'5 or something like that. But they are not scared to run him at all. So, you know, they're, they're going to have to be ready to stop this guy. Now, Dallas, they struggle with defending the run. Um, that I, I would say that's probably like their weakness right now. Um, they drafted Mozzie Smith, and he can play. He's very disruptive. Um, Michael Parsons, obviously, we know what he's about. I mean, he is, you know, uh, he should be up for Defensive Player of the Year awards. So they're going to have to try to put a hat on both of those guys, man, and, and slow them down. Now, the G, the G-man offensive line. They weren't really that great last year. They gave up a lot of sacks. So it's going to be a great matchup to watch. Um, Waller is their new addition at tight end, so he should provide a spark offensively for them. The Cowboys secondary is extremely sharp, as we know. They have digs, and um, they are ball hawks. So if that ball gets hung up out there, they're going to try to steal that ball left and right. So overall, it should be a, a very exciting game. I think Dak just needs to be patient. Um, not try to do too much and just kind of let his players just play, you know what I'm saying? And spread the wealth all the all the way around. And the Giants, if they get this running game going, Saquon Barkley, it could be very disruptive and it could be a long day for the Cowboys. So that's something to watch out for, for sure. But I think that right now we should just get right to the points. What do you think? I think so too. Also, quick fact check. Thumbs up. Green check mark. Daniel Jones is in fact six foot five and reports out of the Giants camp say he gained 10 pounds of muscle. Big boys up to 220. Let's get to the points. <laughs> Let's get to the points. So the Giants are a three and a half home dog. I think they'll play tough. I think that they'll possibly keep it close. Dayball, the head coach for the Giants, is um, a mastermind. He will have his team ready to go. But I'm going to roll with the G-men to cover this. What do you think? I'm rolling with the Cowboys. Micah Parsons led defense. It is just too <laughs> damn good. You know that if they lead the NFL in takeaways again, they are the first defense since the 1972 to 74 Steelers to lead the league in takeaways three years in a row. These guys are ball hawks. I am still not on the Daniel Jones hype train. Give me Dallas. Ooh, I don't know about that, but we will find out quick enough. Now, some of the bets that I like, I like Saquon Barkley over 65 and a half rushing yards and a touchdown. I also like Daniel Jones over 31 and a half rushing yards and Dak under 236 passing yards. You can book it. Book it. And then how many weeks under 236 before people start calling for Trey Lance? <laughs> I'm going to give him like four weeks. <laughs> it's probably going to be <laughs> earlier than that. It's all up to Dak. If Dak can actually show and prove that he belongs there, then, you know, they'll they'll put all that other stuff to bed. Dak and Daniel on Sunday night. Zoom, I know you like to keep it quick. How about Monday night when we have Aaron and Josh? Of course, that's Aaron Rodgers and Josh Allen. Monday night football, we get the debut of Aaron Rodgers in the Big Apple. Hit me. Yes, the Bills are at the Jets, and I am super excited for this game. I mean, it's going to be high-powered, and this game is very intriguing because Aaron Rodgers, he makes his debut to the Jets in a Jets uniform. So he goes from green to greener, I guess. And uh, he is bringing all his boys with him. They are a very talented team over there. you know. But the Buffalo Bills, they have a lot of talent and a lot of depth, especially defensively. So they're going to look to shut down Rodgers um, early and often. And and Rodgers, I mean, he has Garrett Wilson, who was the offensive rookie of the year last year. So we know what he can do when he gets the ball in his hand. So I'm 
pretty sure that they're going to get a lot of targets to him. But um, the Bills also have Tredavious White. And Tredavious White is healthy now, and he is like a shutdown corner. So that's going to be a really nice matchup to see. And Rodgers, he brought a lot of familiar faces with him, with Cobb and Lazard. So you could you could trust and believe that he's going to go to the old faithful and start throwing the ball to them as well. But I'm a little worried about the Jets' offensive line. They fell apart last year a little bit with some injuries. And I think that that might be the weakness of this team but the bills are fully aware of that and they're going to do everything that they possibly can to disrupt all of that stuff so no von miller obviously because his knee is hurt so he's going to be out for this game but defensively they will miss him but they have ballers all over the place they have leonard floyd who played for the chicago bears and we know him well they have rousso um russo up front as well coming off the edge and they have the pro bowl safety jordan poyer and he's very active so defensively they're going to bring their A game, and it should be really explosive. And the Jets, they have a two-headed monster in the backfield. They have Brees Hall, and he is healthy also. And then Dalvin Cook, he's another healthy guy. And when they get when these guys get going, it's going to be really tough to shut both of these guys down. So they're going to have to find a way to try to try to shut them down, but I don't know if they can. And the Bills, their offense, as we know, is elite, Sam. Um, they have Josh Allen. They have Stephon Gibbs. They have Gabe Davis. Dawson Knox, who was the Pro Bowler uh, tight end also. so, And also they have uh, Ken Cade, who's a tight end, the rookie uh, tight end. So they they have weapons all over the place. And I'm sure Josh Allen is going to try to um, spread the wealth and get in that end zone because they're going to have to defeat this team. But defensively, they have uh, the Jets have DJ Reed and Sauce Gardner, and Sauce is just the man back there. I mean, what he's been able to do in his first year in the NFL has been tremendous, and I think that this trend keeps on going. And then they also have Q Williams in the middle, and he is a big boy, v extremely disruptive, just got paid, I believe, a lot of money. So he's going to be going out there, and he's going to show and prove for sure, along with uh, Jefferson and Lawson. And they're linebackers. They're tackling machines, as we know. So this is going to be a fantastic matchup for Monday Night Football. I am really looking forward to this. What about you, Sam? Me too. By the way, Q Williams, yeah, he's a rich man now. Four years, $96 million. I think Joe Burrow would still buy him dinner if those two ever go out. <laughs> uh, but for now, I think Q will be content just sacking Joe Burrow. Yeah, you know, you mentioned, speaking of sacks, that the Jets' offensive line seems to be like their weakness. Dwayne Brown said he basically played on one arm last year, and he'll protect exactly. Aaron Rodgers at all costs. But it sort of feels like this Jets' offensive line narrative is going to continue week one to week 17 because Aaron Rodgers, 39 years old, you do That's not right. want to see him running for his life. All right, Zoom, I'm antsy. I'm eager. You mentioned green. I've got money on my mind, but let's go to the points on Bill's Jets. Here we go. So the Jets are currently a two and a half point home dog. So I think this game will be close. I like the matchups that I that that are um across from each other. I think they're evenly matched. Um, it's two really good quarterbacks. Um, I really do like the Jets on this one, though. I like the Jets to cover the spread. What about you? I like the Bills. I'm going to agree. I'm going to disagree with you twice, okay. which is bold. But then again, you were wrong on Thursday Night Football. So I guess That's true. I should That's hedge true. my bets against you. I just think this Bills team has too much firepower. Yeah, the Jets are probably a playoff team, but it just I, I get the juju that Josh Allen is going to go off fresh legs after a full off season. So give me the bills, but people maybe you want to listen to zoom. He played in the NFL very and I'm just bold, a dude. Very bold, very <laughs> bold. Well, let's get to some bets. Let's do it right now. I like Josh Allen under 253 passing yards um, because I feel like this game is going to have a lot of explosive defensive games. I think there's going to be some sacks involved and things like that and some hurry up, some pressures. So defensively, I think that they're going to get after him. So I, I'm going to take the under there for passing yards for Josh Allen. But I, I do see Josh Allen with a rushing touchdown. Now, with these big quarterbacks, they love to just, you know, run like little quick little little runs around the tackles and the guards and things like that. So I feel like if they get close to the goal line, they're going to run Josh Allen around the corner. And I think that he's going to get in for a touchdown. And lastly, I like Allen Lazard over 39 and a half receiving yards. Like I said, this is going to be a defensive, really good matchup. And I think one person that might get a little bit busy right now is Allen Lazard. And plus, he's a favorite of, of Rodgers. 
One more for you, Zoom. I got a question here. Dalvin Cook is someone I almost drafted in fantasy. I see his over-under, 43.5 rushing yards, which feels yeah. low for a player like Dalvin Cook. Over-under there. It, I, I would say under, just because they're a two-headed monster back there, and um, the defensive line is serious business. So I'm going a, I'm to a go under because they also have Brees Hall as well, and I think that they're going to split time, and I don't think that he's going to get over that, that amount. And I mentioned fantasy. So I want to finish out with a new segment that we're debuting here on To The Points. How about a little fantasy football, Zoom? I just had my fantasy draft the other night, and there is nothing that's been on my mind more in the last 48 hours. So let's hear some of your fantasy picks. I'm dying. Oh, my goodness. Well, I only have a couple of them. But okay. right now, for starting for a quarterback, I want to say Geno Smith. Now, Geno Smith last year did a fantastic job like he really did with what he had he was able to step in there and move this team forward i think there's going to be more of that this year i really like geno smith in this matchup and then javante williams i feel like with this matchup it's really set up really nice for him so i think that he's going to go off and go crazy and for defense I like the Washington defense versus the Arizona Cardinals. I, it feels like the Cardinals are tanking. That's what it feels like. And I feel like the Washington defense is going to be all over that. They're going to, it's going to be pick city. Trust me on this pick city sacks all over the place. This defense is going to be ready to play. Ron Rivera is going to have this team ready to play. You mentioned Ron Rivera. I just drafted scary Terry McLaurin. I'm hoping he plays. What do you think of my man, Scary Terry? I like him. He, extremely shifty, very athletic. He has a lot of speed. You know, um, I, I, I like the matchup. I like Terry for sure. He's yeah, going he, to spin. That's a good pickup there, Sam. He's got a little turf toe. Do you ever have turf toe? I had turf toe. I had turf toe, but uh, it, it didn't slow me down. That year I rushed for a little over, you know, uh, 2,000 yards. So they'll get that thing sewed up and he's going to be totally fine. Okay, for your next, I know you just had a birthday. Happy birthday, by the way. For your next birthday, I'm going to get you a shirt that says, I had a turf toe and still rushed for 2,000 yards <laughs> because I am Jerry Azuma. I like it. I like it. <laughs> All right, Zoom, great episode two. Why don't you take us home? All right, football heads, this has been To The Points. Make sure to like and subscribe and follow at Jerry Azuma and Sam Brief on all social media platforms. Until next time, guys.